Hi, today I will give you a little overview, some tips on European War 6, 1914. Since I see that you guys enjoy the video done for World Conqueror 4, I don't have any script, so forgive me if I may forget something or may bubble too much. Starting at the beginning, as usual, you have the settings, the, the home, you go to Easy Tech site, and then that's the cloud, so you can save the games, because I finished the game already, and I'm now playing all the mission without general, every time I load my earlier version, so I can recover my medical kits, and then a VIP, if you bought some in-app, there you can get daily rewards. So the first screen is the campaign mode, the campaign starting from the top, the plus sign is the store, for in-app purchases, you have VIP package for different general, and I bought at the beginning these two. These are the Ferdinand Foch and the Ludendorff package are great because these are by far the two best generals in the game. And also you get a daily gift. For uh, Foch, you get 10,000 gold a day. And for Ludendorff, you get 50 medals a day. That's great. You have other options, other packages to buy. Um, personally, I don't think any of the other is worth it, except maybe to invest in medals at the beginning. Okay, uh, you have on the bottom left the four ads a day, so use them because you can get uh, medical kits or other price. And then you have an achievement. In this case, you see I complete them all except for this one. When you, you unlock things. And again, I got another one. You complete it. I complete all the rest, so not much to say. Then we go into the screen. You see the, the various campaign, the chapters. The first one, well, you start with the tutorial. And then you have a civil war, and there are numbers, so 1 to 10. The last one being the rise of the Apennines. And every campaign... You can play in campaign mode. For example, Civil War is 15 missions, but also you have the challenge mode. Okay, I completed all, of course, but so what's different in the challenge? In the, it's not enough to defeat, to conquer targets. You also need to fulfill other conditions. For example, let's say this, the first campaign You need to do the typical campaign, eliminate all hostile country. And if I go in the challenge mode, you see you need to defeat one key point in the specified round, and then for the additional star, two and three key points. So there are much more conditions, so challenges are harder. Therefore, my advice to you is that you complete first all the 10 chapters of the campaign and then you start playing the challenges. Because every campaign, once you finish, you unlock training and you get additional items here for every uh, campaign chapter when you complete a certain number of points. So uh, the first uh, uh, 15 stars, you can get two silver medal, a knife and money. And then uh, after other 15 stars, other prize, and eventually you can get this uh, Battlefield Medical Pack, okay? So complete all the campaign first, which are easier. And then when you go into the training, you see the training here, you can improve uh, the mobility, defense, and attack of all the troops and the HP and uh, the population, meaning that the troop will require less population to build. So if I look at infantry, I max out all the training, but for example, you can increase the attack and uh, you, the training will be locked and you will unlock them progressively by passing the various campaign stage. That's why I wait for the challenges later on. And okay, you, you have the same for cavalry, artillery, ships and fort, you have always these uh, dimensions of attack, defense, mobility, and health. 
in my opinion, training is much more important than generals, so invest in this. Going backward, we are talking about generals. If you click here, you access your general dashboard, and if you want to buy more, you go in the military school where all the guys are. When you buy a general, the general are divided into various tiers. Is a gold, purple tier two, blue or tier three, and green, which are really the losers. Now, when you buy general, you need to keep into consideration the history mode. This is the most uh, difficult uh, part of the game. And in this mission, you can only use generals of the nation you're playing. So if you're hesitating between two cavalry, for example, you should buy Joffre because he is French and you will need it in a couple of very tough missions in history mode versus others. Or uh, um, Frunze, you need it in a, you, in a Soviet Union uh, mission in history mode, like Trotsky and Tukhachevsky. So <clears throat> it's, a, it's a good idea to try to pick into the history mode to understand what are the requirements. Because it's locked, you can Google it and see for every mission what generals are available. Said that, um, who are the best general? As I said, by far, Ludendorff is the best. In my case, with all the skill and item, you get an ability general of 138 and cavalry of 123. These are massive. He has uh, always the cavalry commander, which is to my best uh, cavalry. And then he has uh, these two items, the Luger P08 pistol that gives you 35 points and uh, the Browning pistol that gives you 30. These are the two best items for cavalry. In general, the items, you have three tier of item for any military unit. Let's say for cavalry, you saw tier one, tier two. Then you have another one that gives you 20 points and another that gives you 10 points and five points. Actually, there are five tiers in theory, okay? The first one is very rare. It's only one available in the whole game. For the 30-point uh, pistol, there are three, I think, or four, and so on. Then, uh, the general, you can progressively, as uh, these blue horizontal bar above uh, what I highlighted is the experience. The more battle he plays, he accumulates points. And once the bar gets the hit to the maximum, then you unlock the next level and you can upgrade the title. And also you can upgrade the, 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 the grade as well. <clears throat> you have every general has up to five skills. The best one uh, have uh, five, other not. Um, and so the skills, you can reset them. You see this button here. And this is a great, you don't have this in the other games. The general may have a skill that is not that great for that um, type of military, and you may want to change it. If you have a medal, like a cavalry commander, you see the skill goes to six, you get a boost. Okay? If you want uh, to reset, to reset it, you need to have these little blue books. It costs resources to reset, so be careful the way you do it. Um, and that's about it. The medals, you unlock them by doing uh, various uh, uh, chapters in the campaign mode and in conquest values. So, Ludendorff is the number one. My number two is uh, Stonewall Jackson. He has also an Isaac 132 and 105. You see, he has two more Browning pistols. And uh, again, he has uh, some uh, good skills that make him very useful particularly the Discovery Commander, the Tactic Master, which is, comes very handy, and the Edge, also attacking the fortresses, and uh, uh, Riding Master. So I think a well-rounded general. When you assess a general, you click here, and you will see, it will show your highest title achievable. So always go with general, which have a title of Emperor, or uh, let's say king, which is the next one. These are, for example, I could upgrade him to emperor, but I need to build experience. I got this general very late in the game, so I rarely use it. Okay. 
but if we go look into another general, for example, Staubenburg, when you click, the highest title is king. So it means that it cannot progress beyond a certain level. Okay, then uh, as a third general, I have Joffre. And because of the ranking, I give the item in function of the ranking. So it's my third one. So it gets the tier three um, item, which are the Colt Revolver, with increase the 20 points. Okay, and one of the plus, as I said, you will use it in a couple of the history mode. And overall, he has a good set of skills. Yeah, the plane fighting, not the best, but yeah. Now, also with the skill reset, skill is not as important as in other versions of the Easy Tech games, but still, it, it costs a lot of money to reset. Okay, so I will focus this on my three. The other good uh, golden cavalry I have is a front set that also you can use it in the one of the history mode and Molke. Molke, you, you can just buy him uh, with medals, it's not too expensive, but he has only uh, four skills and the maximum level is Prince, as you can see. Okay, uh, artillery, as I mentioned, number one, the king of the king is Fock that you can use it in the second battle of the Marne, very difficult uh, history mode campaign, it's the last one I completed, you can watch the video on my channel, he has also a 135 ability general, 120 artillery, he has therefore the best artillery item, which is the quadrant, 30 point increase, and the telescope that gives you 35 points. He has the best artillery skills, with the artillery master, artillery commander, storm fortification, tactic, and the salvo. So to me, it's very fast. And uh, yeah, to me, it's really, it's really great. And my number two is this guy, Hindenburg. So as well, he has also a quadrant, 135 and 99 with the Emperor level. And I rarely use more than two artillery, to be honest, because I am a cavalry person, and I rarely use the infantry. I only use one general in infantry, normally because you are given few units. But for uh, uh, Tukhachevsky and uh, Trotsky are my backup artillery, if you need to. But spend your money really on cavalry. Make sure on cavalry you have a top of the line uh, range, then invest in a couple of artillery, that's all you need, and really infantry, I use this guy, Ulisse Grant, you get it for free, you upgrade it, 97 and 73, that's a decent, and then my number one infantry actually is Nicholas first, he's slightly better, and uh, he is now with the item to 111 and 112, but also he has a higher level, he's Emperor, against the grant that is a lower and uh, his uh, skill set is slightly better so I use one of the two or maximum those two. McClellan is by the way a cheap cavalry general if you need to boost the roster uh, yeah the other some of these guys I got them because of the history mode and so for navy I really have a Terrible Navy General, I see my best are blue. So I think Max, no, my number one is, uh, I even forgot because I really used them. I put the Geprat. Alfredo Acton. <coughs> yeah, because I played the last mission in uh, history mode, and I screw them up. But okay, so I have a couple of general, these are all free. The Robeck, you unlock them by doing the mission. And uh, normally this is my best one, Max Loff. And yeah, and this is the, the item that I removed, 
so there you go 115 naval ability and normally here you can see if there are medals that apply to his skills these are already allocated to other generals so no medal for this guy okay he has a very low rank maximum to duke but again that's all i needed to be honest Okay, enough of generals. Let's look at the sorry at the princesses. You unlock them also here by accomplishing missions and advancing in the game. I use normally four princesses as you might have seen in my game. Sophie decrease the cost of recruiting artillery by 35 percent. For example, if it costs you 120 coins to build a cannon. With Sophie, it will cost you only 80. Normally it's 25%, but because I won with three star one of the history mode campaign, I got this uh, bonus. Then the second one I use is Nikolevna. Whenever you have a whole mission that you need to hold the key point, these princes in the city will reduce the damage of your units within the three grid radius of the city. Okay. The opposite is Louise. He said decreasing damage, increase the damage on the enemy. They are in the, within three grids of the city. And the last one I use is Adelaide, 25% reduction when you buy cavalry. So the same applies to the, to the other princess. If a cavalry costs you 100, with Adelaide it will cost you 75. And you see below, you see every princess she gives you some daily award, two medals, 500 gold. Okay, we talk the training, and then the last one is the item. So these are all my items. As I finish the game, I accumulated a lot. Many of them, I don't need them. I could sell them, but what do I do with the money? I have, as you can see on the top, I have uh, 5 million coins. <laughs> so not very useful. I have some interesting items. I have still a Navy commander in jungle fighting and allocated medals. Also, you see I have a gazillion medical kits because as I mentioned, I save the game every time and I get daily new medical kits between my coins and the ads, and then I keep saving, so I build them up. And then I unlock a few special items that is a word order because I won the historical campaign with three stars. Yeah. Okay, so speaking of the devil, I told you before to check it on Google, but what an idiot, you can check it on me since I already finished the game. So that's history mode, you have a few history facts, but whenever you see the sword, then you know that that's one of the missions to play. So that's a battle of Gettysburg, which I completed in 13 rounds with an S score. And for example, now for every battle, let's see, for Gettysburg, so these are the general you can use. Ulysses Grant, you should have, and then you have McClellan. And Sheridan, these are two. Sheridan is also very good and cheap cavalry, and the other. So once you do that, you know, uh, you know, you may buy some of the general with coins because these are normally cheap, and so you are able to apply them for this mission. Because the history mode without general will be very very tough. Okay, the second mission is march to the sea. And again, let's see. Uh, I think I need to restart because they were, the generals were already assigned. Okay, I must have started the game. Okay, March the Sea. <clears throat> again, you have the same generals. They are American. So, those generals you can cover the first two missions. Then the Austro-Prussian War. Here, 
Molken in the book I had, and then you have Bismarck, which is super expensive, Rupert, Leopold Besseler, and Falkenhausen. Okay? So you won't be able to buy all the generals, but if you know in advance which general you need, maybe you can select uh, when you need to buy a, a general, like Hindenburg, I told you, is a very good artillery. So that's an extra value for having that. Since we are in the screen, I wanted to show you something. You see, whenever you have a city, like this one, with this uh, black symbol on the top, that means uh, if you conquer it, you get a gold bonus. Likewise, you may have a similar cities. Let's see if you see here. No, it's not. With the industry sign or knowledge sign, you get bonus in that thing. Okay. The other important thing when you start the mission, especially the tough one, check what you got in your city. You know, for example, if it's a difficult mission, maybe you want to invest in a palace. And then here in the palace, you put your princess. For example, here you need to conquer and you need to destroy many cities. So maybe you go for uh, Sophie so that they will reduce your artillery cost, for example. Okay, and then try to invest in upgrading. Not always you can upgrade the city. Also, I, I really do this, but if you click here, that's the national technology, and you can uh, amplify your technology. For example, here, this one unlocks the group cannon, or you can go for an extra slot in a terms of attack range. Okay, then this is the Franco-Prussian, it's the fourth one. You can skip this part if it's boring for you, but I thought that for some of you it would be useful to know what are the general that you need. And again, this is the same, same general as the mission number three. Okay, so they go in couples basically. Then number five. Russo-Turkish War. This is a very tough one, I remember. So in the Russo-Turkish, you have um, Uro Patkin as a gold. Then you have a few um, tier 3 generals and a couple of tier 4. And several, actually, even tier 2. So lots of generals. Try to get it because this mission is extremely tough. Then the Cuban War of Independence. That's a tough one because you have mostly Navy and really you have only two infantry generals. So this mission you rely on your forces. Honestly, if you got this far, you should be pretty good by then. Then when you do the Russo-Japanese war, you see there is a chance for you to buy a general gift package to advance in the mission. I didn't buy, but I mean, for dollars, you can get some good generals. Ivanov, by the way, is a good artillery general. And again here, Yes, these are the three general in the packet. That's the only one you can do. No? But I did this mission without generals and I managed with the three stars. Just beef up the medical kits. Then the Balkan War. So the Balkan War, you have again similar um, to the mission uh, we saw two missions ago I forgot the name the name is all the Russo Turk uh, war whatever anyway the general lot is similar so like Todorov it was uh, also in there and these general are cheap so you could buy some of them for small coins yeah the, the Russo Turkish Okay, then second Balkan War. Uh, yes, 
Stepanovich. That's a, a decent cover in general. Were to have it, but I have it. And then the others, like Putnik, is very cheap. It's worth the storm, it's cheap. And it's worth to have it because you have a field uh, artillery and you have uh, two good cavalry, so it would be a shame not to put them the generals. And then we have the last uh, five mission, the Battle of Isonzo. It will take a while to finish history mode. It's really tough, but great. Okay, so these are the Italian generals, which are actually really terrible, except for uh, Garibaldi and the Duke of Aosta. The Battle of the Jutland. <clears throat> this is the one mission I need to play again, because with the three-star victory, you may win the bonus for the princess Adelaide, so that you get 35% discount on cavalry instead of 25. Very useful for me. I should play it. Anyway, so here you get these uh, uh, two navy, which are very basic, and the other generals, these are American. You may buy them. I didn't. Actually, English, sorry. Okay, then we have Battle of Verdun, which is <laughs> really, really tough. And again, here you can use Foch and Joffre, Joffre the cavalry, I told you. Uh, then you have uh, um, yeah, Petain and McMahon are two very strong infantry generals, but again, I don't spend money for infantry, so I wouldn't have them. Very, very tough mission. And then we have the last two. The RFSR, you can purchase the package, and I did actually, to get those uh, Soviet generals. This mission also is quite messy. Yeah, so with, you can get this three gold general with the package, Frunze, Tukaczewski, and Trotsky. These are decent general. I would really recommend, if you want to buy some general, to focus on these ones. Buy the package eventually, or you can buy them with the medals. And then the last mission, the second battle of Marne. See, the first time I only got an A with two stars, and then I did an S with the, in 11 turns, which is very good. And again, so. And here again, you get Joffre, so that's why the this French, it's really a must buy, because you can use it in two of the toughest history mode. Espere is a very cheap, you should get it for infantry. And then if you are open for in-up, get Falk, you get double benefit, best artillery general and daily bonus. Okay, and that concludes the history mode. And then uh, the other section is Conquest. I haven't played much of the Conquest in this game. I played it in World Conquer. I, Conquest is very long, didn't have time and not really play a lot. But there you see you have the achievements. I still managed to complete all the conquest achievement, but not the conquest challenge yet. So I won playing with all the generals, with all the ranks and stuff like that. So you have, as usual, you have four historical period of conquest. And you can play in each period with a three, two or one star. And then you have also the challenge version for Conquest, which I have not played. And in fact, I played only one. So, opportunity to get a lot of medical kits. In my case, not important, but also you can get this uh, training boost that increase the training 
one extra level. Okay, so I think more or less I gave you all the basic advice. Um, not many advice in terms of the campaign. Ah, by the way, daily you have this thing, the populate. You can put one of your general. I mean, this is a cavalry, so I put. You can accumulate medals. Okay. One thing I wanted to show you, maybe just the last one. Let's say if I do a campaign. Couple of campaign considerations. So when you start the mission, objective, capture all key points. So first you observe, you see here, this city you get a knowledge bonus. Here you get a gold. And here you get a gold as well. And here nothing. So you need to conquer these four, which are all at the stream of the screen with a lot of mountains. So beware of the terrain. And so you need to develop a plan of, you see, because here you have your allies, they will weaken this side. So probably we should start focusing onto this side, then go up, then pass between these two mountains. So every time when you start a mission, do the first design and try to get to this target in a straight possible line. Don't waste too much time killing all the units along the way. I personally try to occupy all the city to starve off my enemy. And also because my units are powerful, I can afford it. But uh, this takes uh, turns away. Okay, I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel as I upload daily a lot of videos. And take care.